Welcome to Tools Tech and Gear. I'm Seth. In this video, I have got the Pecron E1500 power station. This has a 2000 watt pure sine wave AC inverter, and it has tons of other options for using DC power. It has an internal AC to DC converter, so you don't have to carry around a power brick and lots of other great features. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive looking at this unit and put it through the test. First of all, let's take a tour around the outside of this power station. So first of all, you'll notice that all eight corners have this rubber stopper on it. So if you were to uh, scoot this around, it doesn't really slide very well and it kind of protects the corners from getting beat up. So on this side, you've got some vents cut so that it will allow airflow into the unit. If I spin further back over here, the back side is totally blank. If I go over here, You've got your cooling fans. There's two of them right there. Now, both sides have this really nice rubberized handle. I've actually been holding this unit with just one hand, and so you can uh, do that, but I do recommend that you use two hands. If I flip up here to the top, you can see the wireless charging spot. It will just set your tablet or phone right there and let it charge up. And then if I turn this to the bottom, you can just see it has some information written about this product. All right, so to the business end, let's flip this back to the front and take a look at all of these features. This unit has a nice big LCD screen here right in the front with lots of good information. Over here is your DC input. You've got this one right here, which is going to be a solar 24 to 48 volts, and it is 800 watts max. Over here, you've got 12 volts or 100 watt max, and it's just a barrel plug input. Stepping down here, you've got the AC input. There's a fuse right here, and this is your just typical AC input, and it has the AC to DC converter already built in here, so you don't have to carry around some giant power brick. This is a 100 to 120 volt input, 15 amp max. Over here, you've got your AC output, 110 volt, 2200 watts, three different receptacles there. Over here, you've got your DC output, 12 volt, 30 amp max up here. Got a barrel plug, 12 volt, five amp. You've got your typical cigarette lighter plug over here. And that one is 12 volt and uh, 10 amp. Down here, you've got your USB. So you've got a USB type C, 100 watt, 18 watt, a regular USB, um, type A right here, you've got 18 watts, 5 volt, 2 amp, 5 volt, 2 amp, 5 volt, 2 amp. All right, let's go ahead and move into the display here. There are two buttons, the DC button and the AC button, and those will allow you to turn on the DC ports and the wireless charging for the DC, and the AC just controls those three outlets. So first of all, let's hold down the AC button, about two or three seconds, and the unit is going to turn on. And so you can see the battery is charged at 50%. The AC waveform here shows that the AC out is on. It'll run nothing at 20 hours right now, and it has no watts. Now, if I tap the AC button once, it will show we're currently at 50 hertz, 126 volts. If I tap the DC once, you'll see it has 50.7 volts here on the uh, battery. So. Because I'm here in the United States, I don't need to have 50 hertz and 126 volts. I hold down the AC and DC power buttons. When the battery button displays blinking, I hold down the DC until it goes into the menu. Now I can push the AC once, it goes to 60 hertz, hold AC down to save that. Now I can change the 127 to like 110 if I want hold down the AC for that, and it's going to save. There we go. Now when it goes back in, you can see we're at 60 hertz and uh, 110 volts, so much better. In order to turn off the unit, I'm gonna hold down the AC power, and it's gonna turn that off. Now it'll continue to run a fan for a moment, and then it'll shut down altogether. Now the Pecron E1500 Pro also has this little pouch that has lots of cables and documentation. So it's got a little warranty card here so you can register your product. It has a user manual, which I'll flip through for you in just a moment. 
and it has lots of cables in here. So first of all, here is a cigarette lighter charger. It has a barrel plug on one side and the uh, cigarette lighter on the other. If I flip over here, this is your AC power plug. Looks like a typical computer uh, power plug. It just has your three prong there and then this end over here. This one right here is for hooking up to solar. So it's got that, uh, what is it, a MX-16, is that what it's called? Let me check on that for you real quick. A GX-16MF is the name of that side right there. And it has your MC-4 on this side. Step down here, we have got your uh, option to uh, be able to uh, jump start a car basically. So you can plug that up and uh, charge a battery on the DC out. And then here we have an Anderson plug to that uh, uh, GX16 again. And so that's going to be your input. So if you have an Anderson solar panel, then you can uh, plug up using this cable right here. I want to try something a little different to charge up this unit. Normally you would just plug this up to your house power, but I want to try using uh, an off-grid system. So I have a fully charged battery with an inverter here. So let's go ahead and connect this inverter and see if we can't charge up the battery here totally off-grid. And so this inverter can do uh, 1500. So we should be able to get some good results out of it. But anyway, I just wanted to try it out. I've not used this kind of setup to charge the uh, Pecron before. I'm going to take the included AC power cord and plug that up to this off-grid inverter over here and then plug the other side up into the Pecron. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going to happen here. Okay, we're seeing some power input. Now it has jumped up to 1100. Definitely going to uh, push the limits of our inverter here. Nice, so, all right, so we got 1100 watts coming in. Sadly, my wire size is not big enough to handle that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the power here and remove this from charging this way. I think this wire is rated at 80 amps and we were pulling 90 something so I don't want it to get too hot. I'm going to turn on the DC power up here by holding on the DC button. Okay, DC out is now activated. I'm going to plug up a USB up here to the 18 watt and then I've got this little speaker that I like to listen to out here at time to time. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this up. And you can see the red light down in here is on. So two watts currently. All right, let me go ahead and put my cell phone up here on the wireless charger. All right, that is now charging wirelessly as it should. I've also got an air compressor that is gonna use the cigarette lighter style plug here. So let's open this up. That display turns on immediately. If I push the button here. Saw a max of about 109 watts whenever that thing was running. So that plug is working as it should. And now let's go ahead and turn on the AC. Hold that down. AC is now on. So we've got the DC and AC going at the same time. Plug this up. Now I'm gonna turn this to uh, setting one. All right, it's showing uh, 490 watts, 1.5 hours, battery's at 52. Let me crank this up here to the next setting. Seven hundred and thirty something watts. All right, setting number three. About 1, 1,000, 1,200. All right, so it's running 1,200 watts. It'll run that for a little over half an hour. 
DC still got 12 watt, or 14 watts coming out. All right, there we go. So the AC is working just fine. Now, as soon as that power kicked into high gear, it did turn on the cooling fans over here. It's blowing air out. All right, they just shut back off there. All right, so now we know these things are working. Let's go do a full charge in the house with the AC power, and then we'll do a, uh, an AC discharge to see if it holds up to its uh, watt hour rating here on the, uh, the battery, which is uh, 1,450 watts. Go ahead and turn off the DC, turn off the AC, let me read some of the specifications here in the user manual. Battery capacity, 1,450 watt hours. It's 28 amp hours at 51.8 volts. It's a lithium ion battery, an NCM. A thousand cycles of life is 80% uh, of the battery. Charge time on AC for one hour is 80%. 1.5 hours is 100%. The solar or the DC is two hours to 100%. It has over voltage protection, overheat, overload, short circuit, and self recovery. Operating temperature is 32 degrees to 113 degrees for the charging. Discharging you can do up to negative four degrees or 113. I'm gonna go ahead and fully charge this unit here in the house where I don't have to worry about that inverter cable getting overheated. So I'll go ahead and hook this up to the wall and then go ahead and plug this up right here. And we'll go ahead and get this started to charge before we do an AC discharge test. Another thing I want to check out is once this unit is fully charged, is the cooling fan going to stop or is it going to continue to run and use power? So let's go ahead and check that as well. Now, one thing to note, this unit does have the uh, AC pass-through power. So you can use an AC appliance or a DC while it's being charged. So if I plug this up through here and then turn on the AC, Hold that down. There we go. AC out. And now I can turn on this fan over here. So now it is using uh, 50 something watts while it is uh, charging up top here. So it's nice to know that you can charge and use at the same time. Go ahead and turn this fan off. Turn off that AC because it's not needed right now. Now this unit also has a UPS, which is an uninterruptible power supply. So let's say you have a laptop hooked up to this and the power goes out, then it will swap over to battery and keep your uh, device going even when the uh, grid power is down. So that's nice to have. All right, looks like it's gonna take about uh, 0.7 hours to charge this up. We will come back and then do a discharge test to see if this performs with the uh, 1,450 uh, watt hours. The power station has been fully charged now for about 30 minutes and I am hearing the fans still running over here. So yes, keep that in mind that even when the uh, unit is fully charged, it's gonna have the display on and you're gonna hear the fans running over here on the side. So let's go ahead and Unplug that. So we are at 100%. You bring the mic closer so you can hear it. Anyway, it should take a, a minute or two and that uh, fan will turn off and the unit will stop. Oh, there it goes. All right, well, now it's time to begin a discharge test to see if this battery actually has an output of 1,450 watt hours. The E1500 Pro has a 1,450 watt hour capacity on the battery. And so I'm gonna use this small heater to test that value out. Basically, I'm gonna plug this up, turn the heater to either medium or high, 
and we will see the watt value show up on the display. And then I will time to see how long it takes for this battery to run out based on that watt value. And that way we can see how close it got to the watt hours. All right, let's test out this battery. Turn on the AC button right here. Take my little heater. So we've got AC output right there. Plug this up. And then on the heater, I'm gonna just uh, turn it over here. Let's go ahead and do heating setting number three right there. And I do wanna get my timer out first here. Okay, just gonna use my phone as a stopwatch. Go ahead and click start there. Turn this all the way up to max. See what kind of wattage we have. Looks like we have about uh, 1200 watts on this setting. The display is showing a very consistent 1200 watts on this heater which means uh, for 1,450 watt hours, we should get about an hour and 10 minutes on this battery. So I will bring you back in about 30 minutes and we'll see if this thing is uh, dropping down to uh, show us the correct values. And then I'll uh, bring you back for the final results after this battery has uh, turned off and the unit has shut down. Well, we've actually done pretty good. An hour and uh, 10 minutes here and we're at 5% left on the battery. So it actually is uh, doing exactly as advertised as far as this discharge test goes. 2% left, an hour and 11 minutes, 1%. So it's about to shut down here. There we go. So the cooling fans have been on this whole time and they are still running even though the unit just shut off. So there's no more output here on this. Yeah, so let's just say we had one hour and 11 minutes. So we had one minute better than we anticipated. Uh, the whole unit just shut down, fans went off. So uh, it is uh, depleted. And this concludes my first look and review of the Pecron E 1500 Pro Power Station. It seems to perform as advertised. The DC all works like it should, and then the uh, discharge test here with this heater showed exactly what we were anticipating, and uh, as the display showed as well. So seems to work out quite nicely. Now the only negative I have about this unit, uh, two of them actually, was that there is no LED light on here. So if you are in the dark, you just have to fumble around with everything or bring your own light. And the other one was that whenever you have AC power hooked up to this from the house, the uh, unit stays on all the time and uses a little bit of power. So keep that in mind. Other than that, it seems to be a very solid unit. I like the way it's constructed and it seems to be the kind of unit that's gonna last for a very long time. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you have thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. If you wanna check out more information on this unit, I will have a link in the description down below. I'm Seth with Tools Tech and Gear and I will see you in the next video. Bye.